Christina, are you there? Uh, Christina, I've made you the host. Okay, and I'm going and to be the co-host. Yeah, and that makes and, us, and that makes us great partners. Yeah. Thank you. And I've also started the live stream. Okay. Awesome. And will you be pushing record as well? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> to see so many of you again. <laughs> Yay. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> oh, well done. I'm happy you're back. Yay. Hi, Cynthia. Nice, nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> oh, well done. How'd you feel yesterday after our dance? Yesterday, actually, I... Did I take it yesterday? Oh, did I miss you yesterday? Yes, I, yes. I was thinking of you and I, I did. It, yeah. I did miss it. I had another appointment and I was so sad. I said, I'm going to miss my favorite yoga teacher. <laughs> so sweet. I missed you too. But next time, next time I will definitely be there. Every Monday and Tuesday, we have cardio yoga. Yes. We have a little fun. Yes, awesome. Hi, Joni. Nice to see you. I love the fan in the backyard, in the background. And I also love the color of your wall. I'm painting right now, so I notice <laughs> uh -huh. well, the color contrast looks great. Hi, Susan. I love this time of the day when everybody pops on. Yeah, the color contrast from the fan to the wall looks amazing. Nice. Hi, Helen. Okay, I will share my screen with all of you. Let's make it nice and big. Okay, yoga for beginners. But, you know, I think I'm, it's really for beginners, of course, but it's for all of us. It's for all of us, whether or not this is our first class or whether or not we've been practicing for decades. Because what this class does it is it breaks down our technique right? It shows us modifications. We learn the modifications we need for our bodies to keep us safe. And this is an awesome class because it's very interactive. So we can, I will mute, but you can unmute yourself. I ask questions. We talk back and forth. And because some poses look different in different bodies, right? depending on our past, our injuries, surgeries, whatever we've lived through in our lives, right? Our bodies, we might need to make specific modifications for certain poses. And in this class, you get to learn if those modifications are needed and what they are and how to do them to keep you safe during class. Also, it helps prevent bad habits, right? So, or if you have bad habits, it helps break bad habits. Um, I'm very particular. I have been teaching virtual yoga since literally lockdown third week of March in 2020. So I've been teaching virtual yoga. Um, I am very specific about cues. I am very specific about always, always, always protecting our joints and building strength without compromising our joints or any part of ourselves. So that's what this class is about. Of course, at the beginning of all of my yoga classes, we begin in a pranayama, a breathing, um, a breathing, some time to just breathe mindfully, bringing ourselves into the present moment, bringing the awareness into our bodies, right? Becoming more mindful before we start moving. Because um, I don't know about you, but how many times have you ever had a huge black and blue on your body? and had no idea how you got it, 
right? Right? That's why we breathe mindfully so that when we move, we can feel, oh, that doesn't feel so great on my shoulder. I think I need to, I think I need to adjust that, right? You understand the, the methodology here, right? So that's what we do. We break down the poses. We find the cues, the modifications that work best for your body. And we go from there and we just keep asking questions and it kind of takes on a life of its own. So I'm a very, very informational educational class to help you feel empowered on the mat and confident, right? So that you can practice every single day for the rest of your life. Hopefully it's to, you know, how so old, right? That you will be able to move able to stand tall and able to be independent, right? To be able to walk, have balance, know your center of gravity, strengthen. This is what we do here in every single class, no matter what it is. We focus on the center of our gravity. We connect with our inner thighs because that, that's the key to living an independent, strong life, right? Having balance. So we don't fall, so we can get up off the couch, so we can pick up our pets, our children, our grandchildren, right, and just be independent. So that's why I teach what I teach. And here we go. Christina from Long Beach, California. I am your guide today. I'm not outside because it's super sunny and a little bit warm, actually. And I just want no part of it. So, <laughs> so I'm inside in my yoga studio. I'm happy you're here with me. I am a certified yoga meditation and spin instructor with all of that health and wellness in my background. Um, I believe that the mind-body-soul connection is the key to living the most authentic, joyful content, right? Because you can't always be joyful because sometimes, you know, things are just out of our control and this is not joyful, but we can have peace within ourselves and we can be content and we can know who we are, right? And live a purposeful life. So that's why I do what I do so that all of us including myself, can we, we can all live the best lives possible. And I'm clicking and I'm clicking and I click too much. Close your eyes, everyone. I don't like want you to get dizzy. Okay, here we go. At Get Set Up, we learn from each other. So ideally having your cameras on really does help me help you. I can see, oh, so you know, I have been teaching for however many months, almost a year and a half now. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. I have a big screen TV up here. Because safety is huge, right? So this big screen TV helps you be in bigger boxes so I can see. So I can see if your elbow is in a place that is compromising your elbow joint, your, your shoulder or your wrist, right? And I can say, let's move our elbow in, right? So if you're comfortable having your cameras on, awesome. If you're not, awesome. But please, please communicate with me always. Let me know if something doesn't feel right. Um, and we unmute yourself, all of you, unmute yourself and say, Christina, what about this? I'm feeling this here. Do you have a modification for this? So please, please, please always communicate with me. And um, I, we will work together and find you the modification that works best for your body. We are live streaming today. So everyone say, hey, live streamers. Live streamers, yay, so happy you're watching. Welcome, but next time register for a class so you can join us live and you can ask questions about your poses you're wondering about or flows or whatever, right? So you can feel more confident on your mat as well. Um, get Set Up does not get paid to promote any specific products. And we have Franklin with us today. Franklin is our Get Set Up TA. Everyone say hi to Franklin. Yay. Thank you, Franklin. So happy you're here. He will monitor um, the chat box. Um, but if really, seriously, especially in this class, if he and I aren't seeing your chat in a timely fashion, just unmute yourself and get my attention. Actually, don't even use the chat box today. Just unmute yourself and say, Christina, what about this? Because what you're wondering could be what other learners are wondering about, right? And we all learn from each other constantly. So please don't be shy and please ask questions. Okay, so before we start, 
I'm so happy to see all of you. It makes me so happy. Make my day. Um, are we, is anyone recovering from an injury, recovering from surgery? Okay. Um, have a medical note from your doctor with limitations. Joni, I saw you raise your hand. Would you like to unmute yourself and let me know? Um, I've had a frozen shoulder on the left. Um, however, it's better right now. Um, I just got a cortisone shot for bursitis and, and bone spurs in my left hip yesterday. But it feels good enough that I thought I could try. And mm -hmm. the uh, frozen shoulder seems to be getting a little better. Okay. So you have spurs in your hip, did you say? Spur in my hip and bursitis. Oh, okay. But so I got a cortisone shot yesterday, so the pain's pretty much gone. Okay. But we'll still, we'll still, you know, be mindful not yeah. to exaggerate a movement. There's one more thing I forgot about. My, my knees have begun popping out like to the right and I've got physical therapy. I'm supposed to be doing at home to start trying to build that up so they don't pop out. Okay. Well, everybody who practices with me on, on a regular basis, we talk about that all the time, not because when we do um, half lifts and folds, folds, we always protect our knees and build the strength. And I'm sure your PT is working on this, right? Building the strength in your inner thighs and on your outer hips to stabilize your knee joints, right? So this is a great class for you. Um, and I will give you some tips for that too. I will give you props to use to protect yourself. So awesome. Anything else? No. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Because <laughs> that was why, <laughs> <blind>, Joni. <laughs> well, I'm turning 70 in October, so my, my body isn't happy about it. Oh, my God. You're gorgeous. No, no. I think you say no. I reject that, Joni. You are 70 and beautiful and just welcome the number. It's just a number, right? Okay. Yep. We have to let go of that negative, like, our society is so like, oh, I'm getting older. Oh, another birthday, right? Oh my gosh, another birthday. I got to live another year around the sun. Wow, what did I learn this year? What did I experience? I mean, listen, this past year was a lot, right? We learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we never, really, never really want to do that over again, right? But every year we get to live and celebrate our life is a blessing. So I really want each and every one of us to embrace that and show up for yourselves on your mats or whatever exercise or movement feels good for your body and move your body, build strength, right? Build stability, build a clarity, right? When you show up for yourself and you move your body and work out, there's a clarity of mind and there's a sense of pride, right? So let that be the essence of every year, you know, let that be what, what your birthday means, right? How healthy you are. You're beautiful, Joni. You're, you're a beautiful woman. Um, and, and we need to celebrate ourselves instead of, you know, the other whatever the society has been saying. Yes, Awilda. Ah, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but oh. hearing Joni, I just wanted to share something with her. About two years ago, I had severe bursitis on my hip, and I thought I would eventually need surgery. Well, I had two shots, and after that, somebody recommended yoga to me. I started doing yoga, and today... You would never know. I mean, um, everybody's different. You would never know that I had this issue with my hip. It helped me tremendously, tremendously. So I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so excited you. for your journey, Joni. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have anything they need to share with me to help you keep safe? Okay, I have another question. So this morning we worked on down dogs. Thank you, Babette. And we worked on planks and we worked on forward folds and half lifts. We learned a lot today, didn't we learn a lot? 
and you can just keep showing up. And it doesn't matter if two weeks ago we're doing the same thing. Each time you show up, you learn, don't you learn something new in these classes? Every single time you learn something more about your body, you learn more, more, you, you see a modification that you weren't hearing correctly. Um, it took me decades and I'm not even joking. Um, teachers would say, some teachers wouldn't even say this, which is so um, not safe. Some teachers would say, have your wrist creases in line with the mat. Well, I don't really know what that means, right? So I, I'm like this, cause that's where my palms are comfortable, but really my wrist creases are making a V compared to the front of the mat. I'm compromising my elbow and my shoulder. One day a teacher said to me, your wrist crease is the number one. The mat crease is the number one. And together they make the number 11. <laughs> and I was like, ding, 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 ding. Because I would show up. And if I practiced on a regular basis, I would get in, like I would hurt because I was a hairdresser for 28 years, right? So I have, um, you know, I'm, I'm worked, right? My, my body's worked from, cutting and pulling hair and blow drying. I have to be very, very mindful. And those cues helped me stay safe. And I teach 24 classes a week and I am, I'm injury free because I stack my joints. I keep my, I stabilize everything. I keep everything supported I'm in touch with my muscles, right? So when I first came to the mat, somebody would say, um, engage your pelvic floor. I, I, I didn't, you know, okay, I engaged my core. Not ever really knowing the pelvic floor is like a hammock, right? At the bottom of your core, right? Right above your pelvis. That pelvic floor, it needs to be strong so that we can, you know, for all the reasons we never want to discuss, right? <laughs> But so we can be independent, right? So we can never, we never have to live with diapers so that we can walk and never have to, right? All those things. So that's what we do here in this class, in all these classes that I teach and everybody who practices with me regularly knows I'm about inner thighs. I'm about the pelvic floor core. I'm about all of our core. I'm about keeping a joint safe. So you just keep showing up and little by little, like you get it, it, you chip away and you, and you understand, you feel your body differently, right? The awareness becomes more comfortable and you, you start to know your body better, right? Right. We have to know our bodies. Okay. So with that said, does anybody have any requests? I love taking requests. No, Babette, any requests today? No requests for this class? Yes, I'd like to work on the core. Ah, okay. All right. I love that, Cynthia. The core it is. Anyone else? Yes, Joni. Uh, I sound like a hypochondriac, and I'm not, honestly. But uh, 42 years ago, I had breast cancer, and they did a tram flap where they took the muscles from my core area, transverse it's called, and they moved it up to be able to form a breast area. And so I have very little muscle down there for this whole core thing. So if there's any accommodations that need to be made. So what happens when you do a sit up? I can't do a sit up. Okay, great. Um, Not good. yet. <laughs> I'll say okay. Everything. Okay. You know what we're, we will do again today? Because we have been doing this more in classes. Um, we will work on different kinds of core. We will work on our core in our tabletop so we can stack our joints. And I know we might have done it this morning, so a lot of you are with me. But listen, these are great exercises. Um, and then we'll work from there. Does anybody else have a suggestion, a request? Okay. We will start in a seated, comfortable position, moving the fleshy parts away from the sits bones. So if it feels better to sit on a pillow or a blanket, elevating your glutes, 
taking pressure off your hip flexors, sit on something. If your knees hang out here, no problem. Take blocks or a pillow, support them any way you can, right? Always just making modifications. So this is called Sukhasana, easy pose. So make it easy on your body. Move the fleshy parts away. So these are yoga blocks, highly recommended. You can get them on Amazon, at Marshalls, TJ Maxx, they sell them everywhere. Um, if you don't have blocks, I suggest using books, right? These books are pretty much the size. They help support us. We'll move through lunges today also because lunges also help our core. So have your palms facing down. And before we even get into our breath, let's stack our joints, sit up nice and tall, roll the shoulders back and down, opening the chest and bringing the neck in line with the spine. Engage that core, bring the navel in towards the spine. And then do a deep cleansing breath in through the mouth. And exhale it out the mouth. This time we'll do a deep cleansing breath in through the nose. And we'll exhale it out to the mouth. And gently close the eyes and gently close the lips. And begin connecting to our ujjayi breath. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Slow the breath and deepen it. Lengthen each inhale, feeling the chest rise, the rib cage come out and the belly rise. Just bring your awareness to the breath. your awareness to the rise and fall of each breath cycle in your beautiful, strong bodies. On the bottom of each exhale now, let's make it more active. So we will draw the navel in towards the spine at the bottom of each exhale, completing it. And then begin the slow inhale. Exhale out the nose slowly and at the bottom, draw that navel in closer to the spine. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale it out the mouth before you open the eyes. Just sit here and feel your body. How does it feel compared to just a few breaths ago, right? Do you feel more present in your body? More grounded, more connected to yourself? And then when you're ready, gently blink, open your eyes. Place the palms on the mat. Roll the shoulders down and back. So there's this way, we're all hunched over. Or there's this way, shoulders are back. Neck is in line with the spine, so I'm not dumping down or looking up. My core, this, this mere act of placing my palms on the mat with my shoulders back and down and my neck in line with the spine, just naturally engages our core. So from here, slowly walk the hands forward just a little bit. Keep the neck in line with the spine. As soon as you feel yourself rounding, that's your stopping point. And begin to gently sway side to side. Close your eyes if you can, and really bring awareness to what is happening in your hips. in your core, 
Fingers are spread wide, pressed between the thumb and the index finger. Pause in stillness. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, begin to walk the hands slowly over to the right. So your chest is closer over to the right bent knee now. Shoulders are back and down. Take an inhale and slowly begin to fold. Now, the moment the left glute lifts, that's your stopping point. The shoulders are back and down. Can you feel the stretch, the gentle stretch happening in your left side body? Priming our bodies, warming up our body parts before we move is absolutely essential. You can inhale here, slowly walk the hands back to center. And then exhale, slowly walk them to the right. And pause and breathe. On your next inhale, slowly walk the hands back to center. Hinge a little further down if you can. Press between the thumb and the index finger and gently sway side to side again. Eyes are closed. I want you to connect and feel the body. Can you feel your inner thighs maybe? The outer hips? What are you feeling in your lower back? Pausing here, taking an inhale, slowly walking the hands up. Draw the knees in, hug them in, give them a squeeze, rock side to side, and then let the legs go long and shake them out. Okay, so we'll come into tabletop, but for, before we do, I, I want you to watch so you're not in tabletop looking up, tweaking your neck, okay? Can everyone see me okay? Should, I think I'm gonna bring my computer closer. This gets a little personal. <laughs> we get up close and personal in this class. All right, so let me do this. Okay, so we're close, I'm moving the blocks. Okay, so this is how I used to do it. You see how my, oh, it used to be like this. So my wrist creases like made the letter V, right? But look at my elbows are out here. So I'm compromised because I'm not stable. When you bring your wrist creases in line with the mat, oh, it might not feel comfortable right away, believe me. You press between the thumb and the index finger so you don't roll out on the outer hand. And you rotate the inner elbows forward. And then feel how stable your arms are. Feel how stable your, your shoulder girdle is. It is amazing, that difference. Does anyone have any questions? Everyone looks good. If it, Unmute yourself if you want to talk about it. So from here, your shoulders are directly over the wrist or a little bit behind the wrist. That helps decrease your shoulder angle because if your shoulders are over the wrist, oh my gosh, that puts such an intense angle on the wrist crease. The knees are under your hips. So sometimes the knees fall short and they come under the belly. So you wanna make sure the knees are under the hips or even a little bit behind. So the torso has space to lengthen and then make sure the neck is in line with the spine. Now here, this is a very active pose. You're pressing between the thumb and the index finger. You're rotating the inner elbows forward. You're pushing the arms up so the arms are completely active. The shoulders are stabilized. Now draw the navel in towards the spine. Create that long, lean spine with the neck in line so the crown of the head is reaching towards the front of the room. Now, when you bring the navel in towards your spine, shrink your waist energetically, right? Engage your obliques, engage the transverse abdominis, whatever you have there. And as if you are wearing a corset and somebody is tightening it 
just energetically, maybe you can't feel it right away, energetically feel the waist shrinking. Take a deep inhale through the nose. When we exhale, we will slowly lower the glutes to the heels, coming into child's pose. Tuck your chin, rest your forehead on the mat. It's okay if your glutes don't meet your heels and it's okay if your forehead doesn't come onto the mat. Just make sure your chin is tucked so you're protecting your neck. Still in active child's pose, your thumb and your index finger are pressing into the mat. You're rotating the upper arms in towards your ears and pushing the shoulders back down away from your ears. Activate your core, bringing the navel into the spine, shrinking your waist, active child's pose. This foundation of the fingers, the thumb and the index finger pressing into the mat, the inner elbows rotated forward, stabilizing the shoulder girdle. This is the foundation for tabletop, active child's pose down dog, plank. Yeah, and anytime you go to frame your legs to come into a lunge or anything, you have your arms stable. Take a deep inhale through the nose, slowly come back to your tabletop. Pause here, find the stabilization. And then this time we will take an inhale, engage. Exhale, bring the glutes down to the heels but shift them up to the right and then draw them up center, dropping the hips down and then bringing the hips to the left, beginning hip circles here. We have 20 muscles in our hips. 20, can you believe that's amazing to me. So move slowly, move mindfully, breathe deeply. Close the eyes if you can. Keep focusing on pressing between the thumb and the index finger. Keep rotating those inner elbows forward when you come up. And the next time your glutes are at your heels, pause. Plant the elbows and roll your wrists, right? We always take care of our joints in this class, always. Anytime you need to take a break on your wrists, please do. Extend the arms out, find your active child's pose. Inhale, sh shift the glutes up just a little bit. And then exhale, shift them to the left, reversing the circles, keeping the foundation of your fingers. Try to close your eyes so you can connect to your body. Right, internal inner awareness. And pause in your, in your child's pose, plant the elbows and roll the wrists and sway side to side, releasing the lower back and slowly press into the palms and then walk the hands to the knees. All right, so before we do anything else, did everybody feel their core active there? Isn't that, ama isn't that amazing, Cynthia? Do you have a question or did you feel it? You felt it, right? So we don't have to be holding planks to do core work. We just have to be mindful of our core and engage it. We can do that when we're doing the dishes. We can do that when we're standing in the grocery store line waiting to check out, right? Engage the core, draw the navel into the belly, into the spine. Those, these are gentle acts of core engagement, right? They build our strength in a consistent, gentle, but steady way. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that format? 
I do have a couple more things. One thing about child's pose I'm going to go over before we move on. But does anybody else have anything about that? Okay, child's pose. Always the big toes touch. But depending on your body or depending on what pose we're coming into child's pose after, you can have your inner thighs touching, dra draping the torso over, or you can have the, always the big toes touch. You can have the legs open, the knees open, and then come down in between your thighs. So those are always your options for two different the two different child's poses. Sometimes if I come in, if I'm coming into a child's pose after kind of an intense back bend, I will want my legs more closed so I can drape over and get more of a counter stretch in my back. But sometimes that makes me feel claustrophobic. So I open up my legs and I let my torso come between. So does anybody have any questions about child's pose? Because it's, it's an important one. Okay. Did anybody not, it, was anybody not able to bring their glutes to their heels? Because if you don't, if your glutes don't make it to your heels and we're in child's pose for a period of time, and I will usually say this, you can take a block, a pillow, or a blanket and put it between the feet right any level and then allow the glutes to hang out so they have support you're getting the same benefits as a as a child's pose with the glutes at the heels so that's the alternative there okay i think we covered all the bases for child's pose are we good any other questions all right okay Let's get back into tabletop because I want to do one more thing. I can't believe how fast time goes. Oh, I could be with you guys all day. Okay, we're stacking our joints. Oh, we're stabilizing our shoulder girdle. The neck is in line with the spine. The navel is in towards the spine. We inhale, lift the right knee up. And then we draw that right knee over and then we plant the right foot. We grab that right leg and we bring it between the hands. So here is the place for blocks. Oh, love blocks here. So here, being on blocks helps elevate ourselves so that we're not dumping over the right leg, right? Because it takes a lot of strength to be on the fingertips core engagement, shoulders back and down. That took me a really long time to do. So blocks are great support here. So you always keep the wrists under or in front of the shoulders, right? The right hip comes back and the left hip comes forward. That helps our stability. So here's core work again. So here, your right hip is shooting back, your left hip is shooting forward. Your right knee is tracking the second toe directly over or behind the ankle, right? We never extend the knee past the ankle. So from here, I want you to engage your core. Lift it, engage it so much you feel it lifting off your right thigh. But just playing with our core a little bit here. Staying here, playing with the core or scissoring in, well, everybody scissors in the inner thighs right here. Even if you don't feel it physically, bring your attention to your inner thighs and engage them. Option to stay here engaged, option to engage everything and slowly lift yourself up. So I will move my computer back now. Core work, can you feel your core? Isn't that amazing? In a low lunge, you are getting core work done here. And sometimes in strength and in stretch with slow flow class, we take the fingertips behind the head and we will twist to the right and we will tap the left elbow to the right knee and we will lift up and come back to center. I know. 
huge balancing act, right? So the fingertips, we'll do it two more times. So have your fingers behind your head. You fall out, you come back in. Our core is engaged. The tailbone is reaching towards the mat because if your back is over arched, you're losing the stability in your hips, right? So the fingers are here. Have a focal point in front of you on the floor and track it as we move. So we will take an inhale and we grow tall. The hips are neutral to the front of the room. When we exhale, we twist to the right, and then we will lower slowly, bringing the left knee down to the right knee, and then bringing it up and back to center. Take a deep inhale, grow tall. Exhale, twist, lower and tap. Inhale, lift and center. Arms overhead. This is awesome because you know what this is? It's a barometer, right? You're, you're really, this is the, like a, uh, not like a test, but like a really like getting to know where you're at. So you know where you want to go from here. Take an inhale and then exhale, frame that left, right foot. Take a deep inhale through the nose, plant the hands on the mat and then exhale, slowly draw that right leg back, coming into child's pose. Sway side to side, roll the wrist. Pause in stillness. Inhale, tabletop, stack the joints, find the foundation. Inner elbows reaching forward. Inhale, lift that left knee high, draw it out to the left, plant the foot, and then drag that left foot between the hands. Shift the hips forward, making sure that that knee is over directly over or behind that knee, that it's never extended beyond. That puts way too much pressure on our patella, on our kneecap. So from here, before we do anything, great place for blocks, before we do anything, we shift the right hip forward and the left hip back, always leveling our hips. Scissor in the inner thighs. Engage the core so you feel the core lifting off that left thigh. That left foot is grounded into the mat. You inhale, lift. Fingertips to the back of the head. Option to stay right here. You're still getting the core work, right? Take an inhale, grow tall. Keep shooting that right hip forward. Exhale, twist to the left. So option to stay there or option to lower, tapping the right knee to the left shoulder. Inhale, lift and come back to center. Exhale, twist left. Option to tap the right knee to the left. I mean the right, right, right elbow to the left knee. Jeez, come up. Sorry about that. Exhale, twist, lower tap. Inhale, lift and center. Inhale the arms up and overhead. Roll the shoulders back and down. This was an awesome barometer of where you're at. And that way you can make a goal of where you want to go. Take an inhale. Exhale, frame that foot. Put the hands on the mat and draw that left foot back. Come into child's pose. Roll your wrists. Sway side to side. Pause in stillness. Inhale, press the hands into the mat and walk your hands to your knees. And one last thing, because I really want to work on this for all of us. So we are all coming in and out of forward fold safely. So let's rise. If you have a block, show me. Okay. So when we stand in our mountain pose, I will always say hip distance apart. Okay, forever I did not know what that meant. So don't judge yourself if you don't. So pivot onto the ball of one foot, lifting the heel up, and then draw that heel into the arch of the other foot. That is hip distance. And then your feet, it's like they have the number 11, right? It's like they have skis on and the skis can't cross. So here we are hip distance apart. So when we forward fold and just watch for a moment, when we forward fold, we're up tall, we're engaged, 
and we're hinging forward and we're bending the knees. Watch my knees. We do this sometimes, or sometimes we do this as we're lowering. So to prevent ourselves from doing that, two, two things to do if you have a block. You put the block between your knees. Voila, it's a distance. Woo! Thank you, yoga block makers. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but I'm very grateful. So then when and you're squeezing it and when you lower, your knees don't move, right? Now, not all of us have a block. Don't worry, I have an option for you too. <laughs> the big toes touch and there's a little space between the heels, but the knees are together. So when you lower, your knees bend, but they're supporting, they're pressing in towards each other so they don't bow out and they can't bow in because they're together, right? So those are the two things to keep your knees safe. And for Joni and for all of us, I would say, and we do this in strengthen and stretch, and we do this, we, we do um, chair poses a lot in our classes, don't we? <laughs> um, when you have a block between the knees or the big toes are touching and there's a space, right? And you're standing in your mountain pose and you're tall, and the tailbone's reaching down and your quads are engaged and the inner thighs are engaged and your navel is in towards the spine and your palms are forward and you are active, right? We will inhale the arms up and overhead. When we exhale, we'll bring prayer hands to heart center, but we'll bring the glutes back and take a seat like we're coming into a chair. Now here is the most awesome part. I love, love this pose so much. I love it, especially um, with the block or the legs together because you can squeeze, energetically squeeze your inner thighs, right? Quads are engaged. Your heat weight is on your heels, right? Not on your feet, your toes are lifted. They, have, they bear no weight. And right here, you are building strength in the center of your gravity. Take an inhale, slowly rise. Does anybody, we're gonna do that two more times before we end class, but does anybody have any questions about that? Does everybody feel strong and stable? Okay, does everyone wanna do two more? Okay, stop begging me, we're gonna do it. <laughs> inhale the arms up and overhead. Exhale, prayer hands to heart center, glutes back, take a seat. Now, when we're here, I'm going to give, I'm going to give modifications each time so that we can have these little cues in our head. The navel comes into the spine, and instead of overarching in that back, putting pressure, you do a gentle tuck of the tailbone, bringing the navel in so you're not putting pressure on your lower back. Lift your toes. Take an inhale, slowly lift. Ah, it's like a reverse squat. Doesn't that feel great on your glutes and hamstrings? Take a deep inhale, bring the arms up and overhead. Exhale, prayer our hands to heart center. Take a seat, Utkatasana, right here. Fierce, fierce pose. Breathing deeply. Helen, you don't have a block and your feet aren't together, but your knees look good. I can't see your feet, Helen, but are they making the number 11? If you had skis on, would they be straight lines? I, I can't really see, so I'm really just asking. But your knees look fantastic. Take an inhale, everyone, and then slowly rise. Ah, yeah, if you have a block, remove it. Take an inhale, bring the arms up and overhead. And we Exhale, lower them down, cross them in front. Inhale, up and overhead. We'll have the arms down and we'll just twirl here, giving our internal organs a little pat, tapping our core, thanking it so much. Isn't it amazing how we don't have to officially do sit-ups to work our core? Pause in stillness, shake it out right here. And let's stay in mountain pose. We'll do our namaste from mountain pose today. 
So we'll ground all four corners of the feet. We'll close our eyes, palms are forward, stack your joints. The knees over the ankles, the hips over the knees. Have a slight, have that tailbone reaching towards the mat so you're not overarching in the back. Draw the navel in, shrink the waist. Activate those arms. Rotate the shoulders back and down so the shoulder blades are trying to touch and make sure you don't overarch the back. Do a double chin so the neck is more in line with the spine. And on your next inhale, gently lift the head off the neck energetically. Ah, creating so much more space between the ears and the shoulders. Breathing deeply. You can do this sitting down, watching TV. You can stack your spine, draw the shoulders back, bring the neck in line with the spine, and energetically grow taller. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale the arms up and overhead. We exhale prayer hands to heart center. Have a slight bow of the forehead in reverence for your curiosity, for your strength, and for your adventure in building a strong life for yourself. And I say life, and I mean mind, and I mean body, and I mean soul. Breathing deeply, exercising our awesome lung muscle. Being grateful for each heartbeat. Thank you so much for coming to your mat today. Thank you so much for caring about yourself. To seal our practice together today, we'll take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale it out the mouth. The divine light within me truly bows and honors to the divine light within you. Namaste. We can come together for a communal namaste. I really- Thank you, that was awesome, loved it. Thank you. Isn't it amazing in a low lunge? Now you have to know, I teach uh, many different forms of yoga. I teach a power yoga class. It's like boot camp where we're inside planks and we're doing crunches, right? I like, I, I do all that. But I will tell you that it is so pleasantly humbling to be in a low lunge with the back knee down and to feel that activation. Like we don't have to do side planks and crunches to have core strength. We don't. It's amazing. <laughs> so anyway, that was my little takeaway from today. I was just grateful that, you know, it, it's taking it down to basics, right? And keeping ourselves strong, keeping ourselves safe while building strength in these subtle, mindful, conscious ways. Does anybody want to share anything? Joni, what was it like for you? Because that was a lot of core work for you. How did you feel in your obliques? Because I focused on them because I wanted you to tap into tap into that part of your body. I like tapping in and I could really feel it. I just fell over a couple of times to the right, but but um, it was wonderful. I definitely will continue this. And you are very patient and your instruction is outstanding. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. It's so important that we all stay safe while building strength. It's everything. It's just that simple. It's that simple. Build strength, stay safe. Feel your body, right? Feel your body. Ah, it's amazing. We only get one, right? Let's just love it all up. Let's just feel it, embrace it, right? Wow. Anyone else? Would anyone else like to share before I share my slides? Okay. Yay. Okay. Uh, share your experience with Liz at Get Set Up or on social media. Here are some related classes and here are other classes. Some of the other classes I teach. I teach 12 classes a week and I teach 
oh, eight different classes now because I'm adding on, I'm adding on a low impact aerobics next Tuesday, I think. So check that out. Um, in a half hour, I teach strengthen and stretch with slow flow. So we use weights there. The title is exactly what it is. We strengthen and stretch while we slow flow. I love that name. It cracks me up. When, I, when we first created it, I was like, God, that's a mouthful. But you know what? It's exactly what we do. And I love it. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, I teach stress and de-stress yoga. Lovely yoga after today's practices. So I hope you can join me. Um, after this class, you receive notes, you receive um, cl other classes that you might be interested in. I usually pick classes around health and wellness, food, detoxing, things that keep us healthy and strong. You also have an opportunity to give feedback. And for everybody who has given me feedback, thank you. I know your time is precious, but your feedback helps me know who you are. It helps me know what your expectations are for me as a guide so I can keep offering and providing you everything you want and need from my classes. So thank you for giving your feedback. It means so much to me. And I am clicking and nothing is happening. Let's see, la, la, la. Okay, well, I know my class, I know the slides. So, oh, did you see that? There was a slide before that. The slide before that is the opportunity to invite your family and friends through the desktop. You can um, send it to them in a calendar on your desktop. When you register for a class, you receive a link. You, you can copy that, email it to them, and you can also send that to them on their mobile device. So please invite your family and friends because it's an amazing platform. We have over 500 classes a week that we offer for free to enhance and improve your life. So please take advantage of this. It's an incredible incredible opportunity. Help at getsetup.io is your email if you would like to host an interest group. If there's a class that you don't see on the schedule that you'd like, if you don't receive a recording of this class, and if there is an organization that you believe aligns with the Get Set Up vision and mission of enhancing and improving the lives of older adults, please let us know at help at getsetup.io. And we want to build our we want to connect. We want to build our partnership so we can keep offering you everything you want. So that is my get set up slide presentation. Um, I have just so you know, I've actually I told some of you yesterday, I have a lot of healthcare professional friends and I've been telling them about it and they're telling their patients because it's amazing. You can learn everything from technology, anything about technology, um, arts and crafts, food, wine, detoxing, um, information about um, dementia, arthritis. I don't know. Look at the schedule. It's incredible. So we just offer so much for so many. So please take advantage of what we have to offer. And I hope to see you maybe at Strengthen and Stretch with Slow Flow in 30 minutes. Thank you. Susan, I'll see you late. I'll see you for that class. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. See I you hope to see you all place. soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Franklin, so much. I appreciate your support, buddy.